Hey guys, Dilla Lady back here again. It's been a long week, so you haven't been able to put any videos out, but I'm sure Ian has kept his all well entertained. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a chili. Um, it's not like a chili with um, kidney beans or anything like that in, because I don't like those. So I'll bring you down and I'll show you the ingredients that we've got. Right, so I've been over at the butcher's this morning because I didn't want to buy big packs on the supermarket. So I'm just getting a bit of mince. I've got some cubed beef as well because we do like the mixture of the both. I've got some um, smoked bacon there as well. I have a red pepper, which is massive. Um, an onion, two chilies. have some smoked paprika. have some cumin, some coriander, a little bit of cinnamon. Also have some chilli powder, like I say we've got the Kashmiri but any chilli powder will do. We've got some garlic granules as well and we have a tin of tomatoes and some tomato paste and I forgot to get out a stock cube, so a beef stock cube as well. So come on then, let's get going. Right guys, so I've just got a little bit of oil in the pan there and I'm going to put my mince in first. Now, this is a pretty long slow cook on here i think a lot of people go wrong when it comes to mince and think you only have to cook it until it turns like a brown color but it's the cheapest part of the cuts and as everybody well most people knows that's the bit that takes the longest to cook so i'm really going to brown this off first and while that's browning off i'll be um chopping up my veggies we'll come back Hey guys, so I've had this on for a little while as you can see, this is exactly how I wanted it. So it goes, you get all the nice little brown bits on there, that's just all flavour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and put it to one side and we'll do the same with the chunks of beef. Don't get rid of any of that in the bottom of the pan, that's all flavour. Right, the cracklings. You can hear them actually crackling. Right, so that's about as much as I can get out of there. I'm going to pop a bit more oil in. And then we'll get the chunks of beef in there. And get them all nicely browned off as well. Hey right, guys, so that's that all browned off as well. So I'm just going to take this out and put it with the mince. Get that put in there. And what I'm going to do now is I've chopped it up the um, smoky bacon. Get that put in, get that fried off, again until it's nice and crisp. Might seem a little bit of a chore this bit, but it's worth it in the end. And once it goes on, this will be cooking for a couple of hours. Um, so once it's actually all put together, there's very little that you need to do with it. Give it a stir every now and again. I guarantee it's an absolutely gorgeous chili. So I'm just going to um, fry these off and then once these are fried we'll get in with our veggies and then this is the, the bit that takes the longest so you know just take your time with it let it so you get all of the flavours and everything in there and what we'll do is I'll just put the splatter guard on and I'll come back to you once that's done. Hi right guys, so that's nice and crispy now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I've chopped up the onions and the red pepper and just get them in there as well, and get them nicely sweated off. Now I'm not that keen on peppers, but in this, because it is such a long slow cook, you get the sweetness out of them. I mean, Ian loves them. He loves them in a salad. I couldn't stand eating them all. 
but keep to their own. Now all of the water that comes out of these will bring off that, the nice brown bit on the bottom. So we'll just allow that just to sweat down for a bit. And then it's just really an assembly job after that. So we'll come back when that's just about done. Right guys, so that's been in there for about three or four minutes. As you can see, the start of this sweat down. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add the two chopped chilies. I've left the seeds and everything in because we do like heat. But you can take the seeds out, just use one chilli or just stick with the chilli powder if, you, if you're not that keen on heat. So once that's stirred in, next thing to do is, is to add a couple of tablespoons worth of tomato puree. That's about one, so there's two. Thing is with tomato puree, tomatoes themselves are acidic. So when they make tomato puree, it's concentrated tomatoes, so they're very, very acidic if you just put it in without frying them off first. So just a couple of minutes, just to let the heat get to them a little bit. And then make sure it's all in there. As you can see, for the oils at the bottom starting to go red. Just gonna fry off just a little bit. Then what we're gonna do is start adding my seasonings. What I have is my spoons. have a teaspoon, because this isn't a huge batch, a teaspoon of coriander. And a teaspoon of cumin. And a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Don't need much more than that, but if you like it really smoky, put some more in. But I did use smoked bacon, which is normally something we never buy. I wouldn't like smoked bacon in a sandwich, but that's everybody's different. People love it, people hate it. So just get that all incorporated. The smell of this is lovely now. Right, so, I'm going to get about a teaspoon of garlic granules in here. teaspoons of the chilli powder. Kashmiri chilli isn't that hot anyway, it's more fruity than it is hot. So then we'll just put that in. You can see it's lovely. And now we we'll add in a tin of chopped tomatoes. And I'm just going to fill that tin up with water and put that in there. And tomatoes will just break down. Make sure you've got everything in. Right, and head back with the meat and any juices that's gone in the bottom of the bowl. Right. Like I see this is going to go for at least a couple of hours. So what I'm going to do now is get a bit of salt and a bit of pepper in there. Teaspoon of salt. And a good grind, I mean a good grind of black pepper. You can always season it later as well. Always taste and season as you go. Now I wanna get this back up to the boil pop a lid on it and then that'll go for at least two hours. You can see don't worry about them tomatoes, the more they heat up the softer they'll get and they'll just literally mush down for you. So, right, get it all off the side, I'll cook if it's up there. 
You can put this in the oven, you can do it in a slow cooker, whatever's best for yourself. But I don't know what it is about the pan on the stove for me. Just really enjoy watching the cooking process. Keep coming and having a peek every now and again. So, I'm just going to pop the lid on there. You see it's starting, a few little bubbles starting to come up. I'm going to pop the lid on. Once it's, you can hear it bubbling even more, I'll just turn it down. Put it at the back of the stove and leave it for a couple of hours. I'll periodically bring you back when I'm giving it a stir so you can have a look at the difference from the start to the finish, okay? Hi right, guys, just turned around and realised that I forgot to put some stuff in. So I'm just going to take that off a second. We'll need the beef stock cube. Just crinkled in there. And the cinnamon stick. Now I'm going to put the lid on, turn it down, and leave it. See you in a bit. Hey right, guys, that's had about an hour. As you can see, it's starting to cook all the way down now. I'm going to give it another half an hour with the lid on, and then we'll do about half an hour with the lid off just to reduce this the liquid down a little bit but there's that's it that's an hour in get the lid on and leave it going right guys so that's been another half an hour so oh, that so what i want to do is i want to leave the lid off now See all and do it for about another half an hour. Now, to be honest, this will be this would be better tomorrow. You know, like what most stews are like, if you leave them overnight, they're always nearly better the next day. But this is our tea tonight. I'm just going to pop that there. Now, what I'm also going to do is I want to make some flatbreads to go with it because we're not going to have this with rice we're going to have it in a bowl with some cheese on the top and some flatbreads to dip in with it so I'll just bring you across and we'll get on with those right so I've got my bowl onto my scales here I want 150 grams of self raisin flour this is the easiest flatbread thing you can make so just put that in there don't need to make too many because to be honest because they're very fresh these and they haven't got um a yeast or anything in they do go hard if you keep them overnight so I'm just going to make enough to dip into the chilli tonight plenty pepper and half a teaspoon of salt and what I can do is take that off there now look what I was doing the bit tomatoes I double tomato on my shoulder do it every time. Right, so just mix that's the salt, pepper, and the self raisin flour in there. Now, and I've got some Greek style yogurt, but any natural yogurt, obviously not strawberry, you know, but any natural yogurt will do. And just mix that in. Obviously you need a bit more. I mean, it isn't so much a recipe if you put too much yogurt in, you put a bit extra flour in. Just play it by ear until you get the dough. Just push it in there because there's a lot of moisture in there. I'm going to have a look with my hands. Sleeves up. Yeah, there's quite a bit of moisture in there, so if you just use your hands, 
bring it together as a door. Look, it's still very sticky. So I think it will take in this flower. Let's keep doing that. What I'll do is, is I'll tip that bit of flower out onto the board, well, bench. Move that over to one side. And then we'll just give it a bit of a knead. That's all you do. If you're doing bread, just bring it up, push it back. There we go, it's starting to stick. Put that under. Right, small flour. I'll use a clean ish hand. Get all of this off here. There we go. into a nice smooth ball that's it now well, I'm just gonna leave that there for a few seconds so I'll wash my hands and then we'll get on with it right so I'm gonna roll out the um the flatbreads now now that's the original rolling pin was Ian's mom's and I love it and I'll never get rid of it but when you're doing something pretty long they get caught on these bits so Ian's actually bought us one of those don't know if you can see it you can actually get all the measurements and everything on and you can make it smaller so I've took the, the biggest ones off which was the green on either side so we'll get them nice and flat now it's the first time using this it has been washed so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this into four with a butter knife Dump the flour there, put them on. A bit more flour, there we go. And we'll get on with doing this one. And this is the way that I do it, everybody does it differently. Just make it, bring it round. Do it like that, brings it into a bit of a round for you. A bit more there, move those out the way. Bit of flour, and there we go. I should have done it on the lower one. I tell you what, because I'm not doing the big ones, I'll I'll use this for now. That's better. I've got the cast iron pan heating up. sticky this door there we go will puff because it's self raising flour that's why I want it pretty thin right. I think that's about as, as thin as what I needed to go what I'll do is I'll just bring these over let you have a look so there's that still bubbling away with the lid off. Cast irons on, I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit and then just dump that straight in. Yeah, it's sizzling straight away. Right, so I'll bring you back once that's done. Right, so just while that side was doing, I've just rolled out another one. Just um, flip it, it's not quite ready yet. I'll just keep flipping it until it's done and then I'll continue doing the other three. Right, so that's the last one in. I've got the other three there. Just see that. So let it settle in there a little bit. So let's do that. Just a bit of a stir. I still haven't tasted it yet because I don't know whether it needs any more salt and pepper or chilli powder or whatever. And as you can see, you see all the little bubbles coming up, that's the self raising flour. With the acid from the, the yoghurt, that does that. 
these only take seconds that's the one side done nearly high but not quite at the highest um, temperature on that. Oh, that was a bit noisy, I put the fan on just while it was, you can see the steam coming off it. There we go, a couple of more minutes and then that'll be all I'm done. I can clean up this disaster area here and then these are ready for when Ian comes in from work and we can sit down and have a nice bowl of chilli. That's that done. Over there. Nice bowl of chilli with some flatbreads. Looking forward to it. See you later, guys. Right, so Ian's home now. I'm just going to take the cinnamon stick out. Get rid of that. Put this chilli on there, so I'm going to just get it with my fingers. There we go. Get rid of that. Right. And it's lovely and thick. I love that. That looks lush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get do you wanna hold that? Yeah. I'll move that it. Alright. It's easy to <laughs> it's easy to do it with when you've got two hands. There you go. Oh me oh my. That'll do. Bit of cheese on the top. And a nice little flatbread. Nice and soft. Oh yes. I'm gonna pull that in half just to show you. Look at Yummy. that. Do you know what this would be nice with? Nachos. Mm -hmm. Do it as nachos. On top of nachos, oh yeah, that chili. Well, we've had that before, haven't we? Yeah. Can you remember when we were in the caravan that time and we had nachos oh, three days in the road? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put on about a stone. Yeah. In about two It nights. was absolutely amazing. There you go. So that's my take on a chili without any beans with some cheese on the top. It's chili with mince and with. Um, steak, proper chili that way. Uh, steak bits and some homemade flatbreads. So Lovely. Ian's just gonna give it a bit of a taste now and then we'll come back to you. Cheers guys. Thank Friday Crunchy, night. thank Crunchy it's Friday. Mm -hmm. Nice beer to kick off the evening. So what's that? That's the brew dog, isn't it? Punk IPA. Mm -hmm. Why not? So I'm gonna have a little sip of this. Just to wet the whistle. <laughs> right, tasting time. Let's get some of this down my neck. Gonna get a big everything there, cheese, mince, and a bit of that beef. Lovely. Oh my god. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's got chili powder and two oh, full cheese is... in with all of the seeds, everything. That is Banging. I'll try some of this bread. What? Oh. Oh. I love these homemade like flatbreads. The thing is with them, you've got to eat them really quick because if you if you leave them for a few hours, they just go. Well, that's why I've only done four, two each. They go hard. So, yeah. oh, oh, honestly, you've got to try this, guys. Such a depth of flavour there with the chili. It just a oh, little bit of a cheese when it's like oh, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Mmm. Might be having another bowl of that after this. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's Friday night, guys. We're going to do another video tomorrow. It's going to be a bit of a special one, so please tune in. Yeah, we've got some news tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. So tune in we'll tomorrow. And you'll find out for yourselves. Exactly, yeah. So enjoy your Friday night. Enjoy the fact that it's the end of the week. We are, and we'll see you again soon. Hey.
Hey. See you later. <laughs> Bye.